Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebi. Today I'm dressed festively because we are doing our 12 makes of Christmas series. Every other day between December 1st and the 12th, we're releasing a new video tutorial online that shows you a fast, fun gift that you can make for the holidays. And if you subscribe to our email updates, we're gonna send you all videos every day. We're gonna be recycling some of our older videos that feature those quick projects that you can get easy for to make for someone that you love. So today we're gonna to be making snowflake mug rugs using a charm pack. So that'll make it really fast and easy because you just are going to be sewing it from your charm pack and you don't even have to think about it. You can make a whole set of them and give them away as gifts or just keep them for yourself to have around the holidays when you're having that hot cocoa or you know, a little spiked hot chocolate is always fun. I like to do that when I'm decorating the Christmas tree, listen to some music and also a little bit of white fabric as well to make those snowflake edges and for the binding. Um, I'm also gonna use some pins and a couple needles, basic sewing supplies, but real easy stuff that you can do fast and then some scrap batting. Let's get started. We have all the supplies you need for this project at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. I am going to using the Charm Pack of Arctic by Elizabeth Hartman. It's super cute and has some fun animals on it. I'll just take a peek at that here. Got some little bears. A couple of those prints. There's some mountains, snow. It's just really fun really cute stuff so i'm going to take a couple of these that i like and that i think will look good together and i'm going to get them paired up right sides together so fabric lines are often split up into colorways so what i did was i took the one that's kind of green sagey and i have pulled one print from each of the different uh, varieties that are in here in this colorway all right so i'm just flipping these right sides together and i'm going to sew up and down both sides using a quarter inch seam. I'm gonna repeat that with the other pairs that I have pulled out. And you can chain piece these to make it go faster. So now I've got seams going down both sides of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up the center and that will start to create a four patch. So I'm measuring, well first make sure that you do have in fact five inches here. I've got a little bit more than that here, so we'll make it work. So what I'm gonna do is I am measuring two and a half inches from the side so I can cut straight down the center of that five inch square. And now we're gonna have two pieces that we can press and mix up with the other ones. So first I'm gonna finish cutting the others and then we're gonna press them all at once. I'm gonna set that seam and press this to one side. Doesn't really matter what side, this is gonna be a totally random assortment. So now this part is fun and this is where it's gonna be super fast. So I'm gonna take this one here and I'm gonna lay it right sides together and I'm going to match my seams. They should nest real nicely with each other. So that way we've got one seam going one direction, one seam going the other. And then I'm gonna put a little pin in on the right side of that seam allowance. I'm gonna do that on both sides. This time I'm gonna match it with a different one so that it can appear scrappier when it's all put together. So now I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam on both sides of my piece. Just gonna match up those corners. I'm 
when I get to that seam, I stop with my needle down. That kind of acts as a pin until I can sew further, making sure my joints are nice. And I'm just gonna chain piece all of these and run them all through on one side and then do the same thing on the other. I tend to flip it around and sew the other side. All right, we're gonna do the same thing we did last time where we're gonna line up the two and a half inch mark with the edge. And then I'm also making sure that I've got an inch line nice and even with that seam. So that way I'm gonna have a nice good joint when we go to put these together. And now we have nice scrappy four patches, but it was super fast because of the way we put them together. I'm gonna to finish cutting up the centers of the other and then we'll put these together into a mug rug. Now I'm gonna press these. I'm gonna first set that seam and just press it. Again, it doesn't really matter what side we're going to as long as it gets pressed. And sometimes not all charm packs are cut to exactly five inches. So if you have one where it ends up being a little bit bigger, like on these, I've got ones that are a tad bit bigger, you can either square them up or you can just kind of ease that in as you are piecing it together to make it super fast because it's just a little mug rug. It, you know, it's totally fine if you fudge it a little bit when you sew it together because your charms pack wasn't the exact right size it should have been. All right, so now we've got the fun part of laying these out. I want to have 16 patches in each one of these. And I wanna make sure that my seams are gonna butt up nicely. So I'm gonna put these on first because the bears are really the only directional bit that I need to worry about for this. Oh, I suppose the mountains are gonna be upside down now, but that's okay. So I have two things I could do now is I could press this going the other way so that my mountains are going straight, which I think I might do. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna repress these so that the mountains are going straight, but otherwise I really like the way this looks. It looks super scrappy. I just need to repress this because these seams are going down and I want my mountains to also be facing up. So I need these seams to be pressed under the top bit. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Then we'll come back and sew this together. Now I am first gonna sew this in the horizontal rows and then join my rows to get them together. If you wanted, you could skip the pinning and just get your seams nested, but I'm gonna show you how to pin just for the video's sake. So what I'm doing here is I am lining it up. You can see here that since my squares weren't exactly five inches that this one's hanging off a little bit to the left. So I'm gonna line it up with the uh, one that's below it because that one is probably the one that is exactly the right size it should be. So I'm just gonna ignore the bit that's hanging out and line it up with the one that is the correct size. Pin this one too. I've got those seams nested. All right, now we're gonna put these through the sewing machine. So for this part, I am gonna make sure that I am pressing it in opposite directions from the start. So we're gonna press this one off to the right. And then decide where I want this one to be in the end. I think I originally had this one down here. So I'm gonna press this one now to the left. So now I'm gonna join these, and depending on how which way you press these, some of your seams may be going in the same direction. It's not a big deal. Again, it's a mug rug. Just kinda of let it be, and it's fine. Just line them up as best you can. Okay. 
All right, so I've got my block together, but now we need to add some corners to make it a snowball. So for that, I need my white fabric and I'm gonna cut that down into four two and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna draw a line from point to point. If you were doing something that like was a white on white, you would wanna do it on the wrong side. This one is just a plain solid. So there is no right or wrong side. So I'm, doesn't matter what side I choose. Now, if you want to, you can pin this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line these up with the corners. And I'm just gonna sew right along that line on all the corners to give this a little snowball peak. Now I'm gonna sew just to the right side of the line that I drew. Just one needle width on the corner side of that is perfect. And I'm gonna do that all the way around my block. Now we've got to slice off our corner. So I'm gonna take my ruler and my rotary cutter and lining the quarter inch mark along the line that we drew and sewed on, I'm going to slice it off to create my quarter inch seam allowance. And then repeat that for all four corners. You can save these for another project or toss them. Whatever you wanna do is totally fine. All right, so now I'm gonna press the corners going out to the sides and then we're ready to quilt. Since the pieces are so small, I'm gonna use some flatter and I'm gonna just spritz that all over the block. And then I'm gonna hit it with the iron one more time just to get it super, super flat before I quilt this. That looks so much nicer. I'm really excited. I'm about ready to quilt this and have some fun with it. Now for the quilting, I'm just gonna quilt in diagonal lines across it and going both ways. And I'm gonna use my walking foot for that. That way it's just nice, easy, and simple. But the first thing I wanna do is make my quilt sandwich. So to do that, I've cut an extra piece of white fabric to nine inches and batting to the same side. And batting has a right and a wrong side if you didn't know that. You want the bumpy side to be up and the smooth side to be against your backing fabric. And then I'm gonna just center this. And I'm not gonna pin or base this at all because I'm using cotton batting and cotton batting will stick to cotton fabric. And since the piece is so stinking little, I'm gonna be just fine without messing with that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stitch all the way down and then secure my stitches. And then I'm gonna turn it and go the other direction. If you feel more comfortable though, feel free to pin base this. I'm gonna lengthen my stitch length up to about 3.5, so it goes a little quicker. So I could mark all this if I wanted to, but I'm gonna skip that because it's so small that I can just see where this next corner is and aim for that. All right, so I've now sewn down both corners, so now I can just stitch and do my angles and get that cross hatched real easily and quickly. I'm just stitching in the ditch when I get to these corners. So now we're gonna take an entire strip of two and a half inch by width of fabric to bind each one of these. And I do it just the normal way I bind everything using continuous binding. The one difference is, is I'm gonna stitch it down to the back by machine because it's just a little mug rug, so I'm not gonna fuss with doing it by hand. But I'm really loving how these turned out. Eight 
uh, charm squares will give you a pair of these. So it's really cute. You can use them as a mug rug with your favorite drink or as a hot plate on your dining room table for your holiday dinners. And they're just adorable. They make fun gifts and they're super cute. So if you've enjoyed this, we have all the supplies you need to make it over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We're bringing you these patterns and tutorials for free. So if you want to support us and say thanks, then shop with us to get your goodies. We have this exact charm pack while supplies last, um, but we have other Christmas ones as well. If that's something you're looking for, make sure you are subscribed to our channel and click the bell notification so you get all of the 12 makes of Christmas videos and make sure you're also subscribed to our email over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We give you a 10% off coupon code that you can use on your first purchase. And then you'll know when we have all of our new videos coming out because YouTube doesn't always tell you right when they come out. Thanks for following along. Until next time, happy quilting. Mm -hmm.